Nebraska under NCAA investigation. Now, it, can can we say that we might have saw or we might have seen this coming? Is that fair? Uh, no. Okay. No. Nobody. Not this investigation. <laughs> no. No. Not this. Like we're talking. Hang on. Let's talk about what we're talking about here. Okay. Let's let's get. We're, okay. Let me. We're let talking me give about the an analysts being on the field, actually coaching kids. That's that's the main part of this. I be, right? I believe a hundred percent of Power Five schools and most G five schools do this. Yes, improper use of analysts and consultants during practices and games. A uh, source familiar with the proceedings told the CBS Sports the violations do not appear to be level one, which is the most egregious in the NCAA's eyes. Analysts on staff are not permitted on the field during practices nor on the sideline during games. However, there has been no appetite among NCAA programs to limit the number of support personnel in recent years. Uh, it was compared to Kansas' situation, which is... Uh, facing level two and level three football violations during Coach David Beatty's time with the program, it's it's a joke, basically. Now, this is being paired with the fact that they went ahead and were holding off-campus workouts that you were not supposed to be doing during the middle of the pandemic, which we knew that somebody other than Arizona State was doing this. Nebraska happened to be one of them. We don't think that those are the only two but this was all reported by two former employees, two former staff members, and now, of course, they have moved on. They are no longer with the program, and they are the ones that turned this thing in. I, I found it interesting that Trev Alberts, the new AD, was not made aware of this when they were attempting to hire him. They didn't tell him about it until he got the job. So it was basically, here's your office, here's your desk, here's your laptop. By the way, we're dealing with some NCAA stuff. Like, it's it's a joke. It's not like you wouldn't have taken the job anyway because this is minor stuff. But wait a minute now. Wait a minute. Nobody would do that, Gary. Like, no program. When you're trying to sell yourself as a job oh, yeah, or, or whatever you're selling, you're only going to put the best foot forward. That's Nobody it. would okay. say, okay. come here. We're a shit show. We're a complete disaster. Look at all these problems that we have. Nobody would do that. My first thought. I listen, I crap on Nebraska a lot. <laughs> all right, you know that this is, this is well documented. This yes. this school, this athletic department has not been ran well for a long time. Okay, but I'm going to give them their due here. A hundred percent of the athletic departments would not have told the athletic director that they're hiring, and if now that he's found out about it, he would like to quit. There's the door, bro. But you're not getting your contract if you quit. Okay, so that's. That's different, all right? You you can walk out now that you know that it's here. And good luck trying to get another job because everybody's going to hide this crap. Oh, yes. You know, so yes. it, it, it's just one of those things. These are these are small infractions that don't bother me. I, I don't know what the NCAA is doing outside of the fact that they have lost so much leverage with controlling and punishing. And I, I guess the word I like to use is controlling controlling these athletic departments that I think they're trying to do something. Well, yes. Yes. I mean, they're trying to come up with something, but at the other side of this is if somebody turns in a program, I mean, they have to do their due diligence. I'm so, okay with you doing yeah. the investigation of somebody and turns them in, but yeah. th there's no doubt that a hundred percent Nick Saban once fired, once fired his offensive coordinator or asked him to move on. The week before, after the playoff game one, before a national championship game, and put in a quote unquote analyst as OC. Now, do we think there's any world on earth he would trust somebody to take over the play calling if that person had not worked with the entire offense at some point in time every week of that year? How many different pictures did we have of Butch Jones on hanging field. out with players? On the field. <laughs> <laughs> on the field, yes. So this is but it, anybody who wants to investigate this because somebody turned it in. We have video footage that it's happened in Alabama, and and nobody's investigating that. Exactly. And I'm not saying they should. By the way, you know me. It, it doesn't matter if I love the program or hate the program. I am very consistent. I think the NCAA can take all their bullshit rules and they can roll them up real tight and shove it right up their ass. Yeah. 
Yeah, we're getting to that point. I do not care about any of these bullcrap rules that don't matter. If everybody's breaking them, then we need to change the damn rules. Here is the the other side of this, right? This is there was a question of whether or not this was somebody inside Nebraska that was asked to report it basically so that they would have a footing to get out of this deal with Scott Frost if things go poorly this season. Okay. Hey, you don't, like, wait, wait a minute. You, so trying to fire him for calls? Uh, trying to find a way to get out of such a massive buyout. If they fire him this season, they owe him like $20 million. Because they just signed him to an extension like I know, two years I know, ago. The, I mean, the extension was insane. They, they yes. literally let him coach one year. They, they, he's never he was, had a winning season. Where he was bad. Where yes. he was really bad that one year they had him had him finish that year and then they and then they gave him an extension. I don't that doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> that athletic director should have been fired. I think they allowed him to step down. I think he left on his own. I don't think they fired him. No, they should have fired him. I I can't explain that, okay? I I yeah. can't explain. I It's if it's you're trying to get your own coach fired if you're doing what Tennessee did, if you're doing what a, Kansas did, where yeah. you're trying to get out of the buyout. I mean, it seems to I – mean, we kind of ridiculed Tennessee pretty hard for this, but this seems to be the modern-day practice. Well, Andy Staples it's wrote an article well. about this over at The Athletic explaining that this is what NCAA rules are used for now. Like, That's nobody right. pays attention to them, but if you can use them to get out you of get paying out of a of massive conscience. buyout, That's, right. That's how you use them. Yeah, It's it's kind of ridiculous, but alas, here we are. The, the off-campus – location they were doing unauthorized organized workouts in front of strength conditioning staff during the COVID-19 lockdown it says it is unknown however whether the NCAA is investigating those allegations which okay you know (laughs) everybody did it everybody was doing it I just had a question it's just ridiculous so Trev Albert said that they are working collaboratively with the NCAA to review a matter concerning our football program we appreciate the dialogue we have had with the NCAA and cannot comment further on the specifics of this matter. All right, so I know we need to move on. Yeah. But you brought up something, and now now I'm starting to put pieces together. Okay. How does Mark Emmert keep his job? He keeps the presidents happy. How does yeah. he keep the presidents happy? He helps them save tens of millions of dollars yes. in these bullshit contracts. So Mark Emmert is literally just... I mean, he's just a Gestapo working working for the organization. Hey, a phone call is going to come in by a president saying, we made a mistake with this coach. I need you to get rid of him for me. Oh, well, let me help you out. And Mark Emmert just comes a running. Yeah. Yeah, basically. That's what he does. That's all he's there for. That's how he keeps getting his job. That's how, that's how people who are bad at their jobs continually keep their job. Yes. yes. They they weasel their way in of the people of power and they just do their bidding. That's all he's doing here. Yes. Yes, a hundred percent. That's 100%. infuriating to me, by the way. That's well, infuriating to me. I mean, there's there's always a way to corrupt the system, right? I mean it's it, it'll be like this forever. They will always find Now if they're doing this holes. now, I now far beyond it to me to feel sorry for any of these damn coaches. Okay. All right. You make a lot of money, you sign shitty contracts, and you're not good at your job. Yeah, they should uphold their contract, but you know, you you've manipulated the NCAA long enough to take a shitload of money out of this thing while kids never got paid. I don't care that you cry me a river, okay? I'm not gonna feel sorry for you. What what I'm gonna be pissed off about is if you're using it to fire coaches, I'm okay with. If this becomes a thing where after you fired the coach, now we're bringing punishment down on new recruits and new kids that were had nothing to do with this stuff. Then that's that's a different situation. You can't punish a team if the coaches ran an illegal. I'm gonna use the word illegal. An illegal practice training last year. You can't punish these kids for being told to go to this practice. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I mean, if if it's an organized practice, that's uh, they're just following orders and following rules. And this is not, you know, you know, this is not Nazi Germany where, you know, you shouldn't follow those rules. No, no. If your coaches tell you to do this, you're going to do it or you're going to yes. lose a scholarship. You're absolutely going to do it every time. Yeah. Every so, time. So, so, so you can't, if the NCAA is just going to punish the coaches by helping these presidents to keep their jobs, then I'm okay with that. If it comes down to, we're going to start putting you on probation and taking scholarships and it's going to start affecting 
the the actual kids that are that are there, then 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 I got beef. Then I tell the NCA, well, you need to hold the hell on. You need to back up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Honest, hopefully, those that, that messed up, leave these kids alone. Yes, I think that's what everybody has wanted. You know, from the get go, right? Yes, that's that's it. That's the whole thing. 